Eric Darling here with uh, Darling Data, and uh, I'm going to pick up kind of where I left off with uh, my series of videos about how I use uh, different store procedures in my day-to-day -day consulting work uh, to help people figure out what's wrong with their SQL servers and fix it in exchange for money. That's my business model. Take it or leave it. Uh, so um, we've covered SP pressure detector, SP quickie store, SP human events, and SP human events block viewer. Uh, we've covered SP who is active. A lot, a lot of SPs have been covered in these videos. So many SPs. It's hard to believe how many SPs there are. Everyone thinks they're special. Anyway, uh, I'm going to spend the next, I don't know, I guess five videos uh, talking about how I use the SP Blitz scripts. Um, of course, you know, I was an uh, employee over at Brent Ozar Unlimited for some years. And uh, while I was working there, I did a whole lot of work on the scripts, you know. Some, some, are, some, are more proud of the, some are more proud than others, I think. Uh, if I had to pick one thing to be com particularly embarrassed about, it's the way that a lot of the queries are formatted in there. Uh, they're, 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 they're real ugly, the way I wrote them. And, um, you know, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's kind of a mark of shame for me. But you know what? Code formatting is one of those things that you evolve over time. And I am just in a more evolved place code format wise now than I was then and uh, you know I think then uh, I, I was just happy if it worked <laughs> and worked relatively quickly and uh, now I'm very picky about all sorts of things like, like like not having tabs and not having white space and you know having things sort of spread out so you can read them easier not just have like a bunch of stuff crammed on one line you know like don't tell me just put it in a CTE to make it more readable most most definitely doesn't work, but um, uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, my far and away favorite parameter, and one that I, I think I wrote at least a couple few of the checks in here to uh, to deal with, uh, is uh, check server info equals one. And check server info equals one will get you all basically everything in this list. Right, everything in this list will show up. If you use check server info equals one, uh, you can read the list yourself, but you know, just because I, I, I don't want to have a 30 second video, uh, OS details, if you have lock pages and memory enabled, if you have instant file initialization enabled, uh, which service account, SQL server and agent run under, I think browser too, but I forget. Um, uh, how many CPU cores you have, like kind of like what their layout is, NUMA wise, you know, like, you know, how many, like if you have two core, two sockets and 10,000 cores per socket, you owe Microsoft your life. Um, how much memory is in the server, uh, kind of how that memory is assigned to CPU cores, the patch level of your server, if it's part of an AG or cluster, the last time it was restarted, how much drive space you have and how much is available, uh, the last time your server was restarted, I think, I, wait, did I already say that? I think I already said that. Never mind, okay. Cut, 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 cut that. What do they say? What, what they, uh, anyway. Um, if your server is virtualized, we'll try to give you some information about that. Uh, if you have any uh, CPUs and or memory that are offline, that are not available to SQL Server because of you installed the wrong version of SQL Server and you have, like, you, you're limited to 20 cores or someone set up affinity masking or something else goofy, then that'll be that. Oh, that's all, the, uh, that can be particularly helpful for uh, folks on Standard Edition who have done something asinine with their VM, like... Give it 16 cores, but give it one core per socket for 16 cores. And then SQL Server is like, well, I can only see four of them. You only have four cores now. The other 12, who knows? <laughs> They're just sitting there twiddling thumbs or whatever whatever CPU cores have for, for twiddling. Uh, what power plan your CPUs are operating under. That's obviously probably far more important for like a physical server than a VM or for uh, uh, anything in the cloud. But... You know, I am I am a, a bit superstitious when it comes to the uh, balance power mode thing. So I always like to make sure that uh, any server that I touch runs in high performance power mode. You know, you can you can go green with your tablets and personal laptops, and you know you can you can compost something to make up for it. But when when CPUs cost seven thousand dollars per core, I want them I want them spinning at full speed. Sorry about that. 
Mother Gaia. I don't know. There's probably worse offenders out there in the world. Uh, it'll tell you if you have uh, multiple SQL Server insta instances stacked on one server, if you have any of the SS, AS, IS, or RS components installed, and then if you have any significant weights. It'll give you like the top three or something, or top five or something like that. I forget, I forget what the top is in there. No, no one would care if they were the bottom weights. So check server info, pretty awesome. Now, one thing that I end up doing with servers after I've gotten to know them a bit is using a really often overlooked feature uh, where you can skip checks for things you don't care about. Um, so you need to create a table and a database, and you need to have three columns in that table, server name, database name, and check ID. And uh, you can tell SP Blitz where that table lives and it will skip for whatever server database and check ID you put in there, uh, whatever, whatever you configure it to do, basically. Uh, so for this, I wanted to check everything in every database uh, except these things, right? So like I'm going to leave server name and database name null because I, I want these checks to apply no matter where we're doing them. And like there are things that, you know, really just don't like affect my consulting. Right, like like this list of things in here is never like if I if I start pointing like any of this stuff out to someone and they're like yeah but my, my server is on fire and like there's thirty thousand blocked processes can we focus on that I'll be like oh yeah it's probably a good idea so this is just stuff that is not for me it might be important to you if you need to audit certain things if you care about who owns a database and privileges and all that other stuff and this is for you this is not for me uh, so I've already run SP Blitz and we're gonna look at the results with all that stuff skipped and I know that you're probably going to be pretty horrified by the things you see in here you're going to say Eric you are a terrible database administrator you have not taken backups you have not run dbcc check db you have dropped clean buffers your temp db is on the c drive and I will say yes it's a vm and it doesn't matter much for me what happens to it I have this stuff everywhere I go so um yeah, there's, uh, there's just stuff that, you know, is just, is just not going to matter to me, and I, I like to skip that stuff, and I like to um, keep a nice, tidy set of results there that are generally focused on things that would make a difference to people, or at least for, for what I do, anyway. Uh, I don't know, we'll see what else we have in here. Uh, oh, recovery. So, uh, all right, so, you know, he, to be fair to me here, there's some stuff that I leave uh, is some, some stuff that I leave as a um, in, in the incorrect state so that when I run this I know that checks are working and things like that so um, you know when I on the on the occasion that I do work some with SP blitz I like to make sure that uh, the the checks that I write will fire correctly so I tend to, to sometimes leave things in not as good a state as they could be so I don't know there's not a whole lot of interesting stuff in here is there PVS pre-allocate. Ooh la la. Oh, yeah, look at that. Look at that. Oh, I got all the, I got all the smart settings. I got instant file initialization. I got log pages in memory. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing well. I'm, I'm rocking and rolling here. Anyway, uh, that those are the two things that I like to do with SP Blitz. I like to use the check server info parameter. And once I've gotten to know a server and I know what doesn't matter to me, I like to use the ability to skip checks uh, so I don't get overwhelmed with 10,000 lines of things that don't concern me. So, yeah, that's that. Anyway, uh, I'll cover some of the other Blitz scripts that I use. I think, forget, forget exactly which ones I'm going to be covering at this point, but there's going to be four more of them. Um, Coincidentally, there will be four more of these to fill five working days of blog posts. And uh, you can, can make of that what you will. <laughs> I don't want people watching SQL Server, getting SQL Server emails on the weekends. It's rude. Rude. Anyway, uh, thank you for watching. If you like this video or you think you would like other videos better, which you might, it's possible. Uh, you can subscribe to my channel. If you like this video, you can smash that like button. 
That was not my hardest punch. <laughs> uh, and uh, I'm, I'm going to record a few more of these, so uh, I, will, I will see you over there. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed yourselves. I hope you learned something. And uh, I will see you soon in another video.